in the memory of late Mrs. Alka Hemant Patil. We are glad to present our audio articles for inspiring disabled persons to achieve greater heights in their career. Under the project of Client Service Department of National Association for the Blind, India, to empower the disabled in tribal, rural and semi-urban areas of our country. Love seeketh not itself to please, nor for itself hath any care, but for another gives its ease and builds a heaven in every despair. William Blake Zainab Chinikamwala A little child with blurred vision skips down a street towards the corner sweet shop. She is almost blind in the strong sunlight and runs straight into a woman pedestrian. Shocked at the collision, the child apologizes, but before she can regain her balance, the woman slaps her hard. A young child stands looking through her dim eyes at a spray of silver stars from a sparkler. Her vision is not good enough to see the mean look on the face of the child whose hand holds the sparkler. But she does feel the searing pain the touch of the firework causes on her cheek. Life and the first cruel lessons it taught tender little bewildered Zainab who lost 80% of her vision at birth due to jaundice. Zainab grew up dreading the sun. She felt fearful of the white light which lanced through her head and left her helpless and isolated. Her mother encouraged Zainab to feel equal to her other siblings and all of them were brought up with the same loving concern. Zainab felt so normal that when she was put into a special school for disabled children in Abu Dhabi where her father was working for a while, she found herself a misfit helping the other children rather than participating with them. Back in India, she completed her SSC from a convent school, securing the highest marks in Maharashtra in the visually impaired category. It was in school that she developed a fascination for the French language. And although she graduated with an economics major, French was one of the subjects she took. Zainab learnt about France through her readers and soon became fixated with the idea of visiting the country. A far-fetched but cherished dream. She pursued her study of the language and became completely engrossed in it. I think the blind have a special aptitude for languages, Zainab says. I found the language so easy to learn. Zainab wanted to do something different. The career options open to her did not appeal to her adventurous mind. She ended up doing a diploma in commercial French and a master's diploma in French literature. In those days, there were no adequate facilities and not enough reference material for visually impaired students and so I was advised to do a diploma instead of a degree, she explains. But getting readers and writers was not an easy business beyond the basic level. At one point, when it seemed that Zainab's education might be interrupted, her sister rose valiantly to the occasion. In second year of college herself, she mastered the language adequately enough to write her sister's exams for her. Zainab's brother too wrote some of her earlier exams. Her gentle teachers were most supportive and it was through one of them that Zainab, who was already earning by giving tuition, heard about the possibility of going to France on an exchange program. Breathless with excitement, she attended the introductory meetings and let herself dare to start dreaming about a French experience. The committee in charge of the program was not too enthusiastic about taking a visually impaired young lady so far away from home. But her teachers promoted Zainab's case, taking personal responsibility for her. And so, magically, the dream materialized. 
wanting to take full responsibility for this uncommon adventure, Zainab put together all her savings and went to France. It was awesome, she says thoughtfully. Everyone must experience it. To hear the language spoken in its native land is quite another experience. During her trip, Zainab never felt handicapped or undermined in any way. I can't understand why a blind person needs to have a complex. We are all imperfect in some way, aren't we? It is our frailty that makes us remember God, she says. Zainab stayed with a French family who grew to love her and looked after her with all their heart. While shopping, they made her touch everything to make sure that she knew exactly what she was buying. At the museums too, she was allowed to see through touch, which was a special experience. Respecting her religious sentiments, the family would not drink wine at the table when Zainab dined with them. They wrote her letters for her and filled her with their special brand of Gallic affection which Zainab carries in her heart even today. When she returned home, Zainab taught briefly at a college in Pune before starting to teach French from her home. She is totally financially self-reliant today and enjoys her career. Interested in music and excursions, she is a member of the managing committee of the Pula Blind Men's Association. She organizes finance from two friends living abroad to help the poor with medical aid. She also helps blind college students to study and to find their own inner strength and purpose in life. Zainab describes her mother as the pivot of her existence. She put her life on hold and helped me with mine, she says emotionally. She wrote out all my 10th standard study books in block letters so that I could read them. She allowed me to live a normal life. The other special person in her life is Mr. Pandya of the Pune Blind Men's Association who, impressed by Zainab's achievements, recommended her for the Neelam Kanga Prize in 2001. On receiving the prize, Zainab felt on top of the world. I felt highly honored and very respected, she says. It made her deepen her resolve to work towards the welfare of the disabled and to make people without disabilities change their attitude towards the disabled. And while Zainab still bears the scars from many wounds that life has inflicted on her, she leaves her hurts for God to manage. challenge zenab feels is a must or life becomes stagnant and she is all for accepting challenges rather than letting them hold her down it is because of her extremely positive outlook that zenab has been able to overcome obstacles and create a remarkable niche for herself in a demanding world already full of success stories Excellence is the gradual result of always striving to do better. Pat Riley. Sobhagya Goel. Sobhagya was born into a genteel family in the city of Ajmer, famed for the darga of Khwaja Moinuddin Chishti. Sobhagya's first happy years were spent in her capacious ancestral home situated behind the famous darga. She went to school like all her little friends and had decided that when she grew up she wanted to be a teacher. No one was aware then that little Sobhagya had been born with a visual defect which advanced as she grew. At the age of 8 she suffered from retina detachment and was plunged into total darkness. Her parents after they recovered from the deep shock of her misfortune decided to do all that they could to rehabilitate their daughter they enrolled her in Nirjanand and Kanya Vidyalaya in Delhi from where she completed her HSC and despite her handicap and the difficulties she faced while studying subhagya discovered that she had a real passion for learning 
Sabhagya completed her BA in History Honours. She then did her LLB, B.Ed., M.A. and M.Phil from the Government College of Ajmer, passing her exams by typing out her answers herself. At every step, she faced people who doubted her capacity on the basis of her disability. People are just prejudiced against the blind. And if you are a woman, it is worse, Sobhagya says. They don't mean any ill. It is just a conditioned reaction. In order to communicate her thoughts and experiences, she learnt to type in Hindi too. She put her ideas down in Braille before ty typing them out. This was a time-consuming process, but Subhagya felt that she needed to bring focus to the trials, disappointments and sometimes humiliations that a disabled person, particularly a woman, is subjected to in our society. Having worked against incredible odds herself, Subhagya developed a strong understanding about overcoming challenges. She has used this awareness throughout her life to help others. But Subhagya's parents and siblings were always by her side. They helped me to develop a high sense of self-esteem. They spared no effort, monetary or physical. I owe them a lot, Subhagya says. Her family formed a circle of love around her. They never allowed her to walk alone. She went into the kitchen only under supervision. She never felt adrift or unprotected. Her siblings accompanied her to the various colleges where she sought admission. They spoke on her behalf, convincing the sceptical authorities that Sobhagya was indeed a scholar in the making and that she would cope adequately despite her disability. In those days, I was hesitant about approaching people and did not come across as convincingly as I should have. But my work spoke for me loud and clear. My confidence grew and the negative suspicion I was viewed with started to dissolve. Today, Sabhagya is the head of the history department at Government College Ajmer. She has 11 lecturers under her and there is no task too overwhelming for her. I can thread a needle, she laughs. The smaller the eye of the needle, the quicker I can thread it. Sabhagya imbibed all the domestic skills she needed from her mother and even though she is not expected to do very much at home, she is as adept and efficient at housework as she is at her college work. Every evening, Sabhagya spends time with her readers. They come to read the papers to her so that she remains up to date with current affairs. To prepare for her lectures, Sabhagya works up to 14 hours a day. She transcribes her notes from reference books into Braille because there are no books for higher education available in Braille. She has to do this at considerable cost to herself, but her commitment towards being the perfect role model and teacher outweighs any other consideration. She is currently learning computers, which will allow her to be more independent and enable her to access libraries and archives worldwide. Sabhagya spends her vacations and any free time that she can grab in libraries and state archives. Her articles on history have appeared in leading national dailies. She is a popular teacher and her students reward her by getting 100% results. So far, 15 scholars have submitted their research papers under her supervision. Sabhagya fears nothing today. She can guide and administer and help her colleagues and students without feeling any less competent than her unimpaired counterparts. For the last 10 years, Sobhagya has been devoting time to creating an awareness about Braille literacy. She presents papers at conferences held by NGOs and is actively trying to create a support system in Rajasthan and Delhi for blind girls who are less fortunate than she was in terms of family support and economic backing. In 1986, Sobhagya was honoured by NAB India for her work. In 1992, the governor of Rajasthan honoured her with the State Award for Academic Excellence and in 1994, she received the National Award for the Most Efficient Handicapped Employee from the President of India. 
Many more decorations followed these awards of merit and those include the award for academic excellence from the Chancellor MDS University Ajmer an award from the Commissioner Disabilities Rajasthan She received a certificate of participation from the World Youth Assembly held in Calcutta and a gold medal from the All India Confederation of the Blind 2002 for her outstanding performance In the year 2001 Subhagya received the Neelam Kanga prize for her work and for her excellence and achievements in academics When asked if she was satisfied Subhagya laughed If I get satisfied work will stop I have a lot to accomplish and give back yet A lady of invincible spirit Subhagya's intelligence has become her source of strength and has emphasized her personality She works with a sense of urgency knowing that time is limited by holding on to her resolve through difficult times and boosting herself on days when doubt seeks to vanquish hope Subhagya has proved more conclusively that there are really no limits to what a tenacious individual can accomplish in life Depend not on another but lean instead on thyself true happiness is born of self reliance the laws of manu neha pavaskar on 23rd november 2002 a rehabilitation center for the blind was inaugurated in government colony bandra mumbai the inspiration behind it neha pavaskar whose world record breaking achievement is mentioned in the limca book of records she is the first blind lady to conquer the 17220 foot high shitidhar peak in the himalayas neha is also a four time winner of the national women's chess championship and an all round athlete too When asked what she values most in life Neha answers passionately with just one succinct word achievement Born in an impoverished home and one of many brothers and sisters Neha's parents never considered it important to educate the girl children in the family Neha's visual impairment went unattended until the 8th standard when she started having real trouble with her vision in studies and sports alike. It was then that her parents sought medical advice but nothing more drastic than a supplement of vitamin A was suggested. Her father urged her to give up her studies in the 10th standard but Neha was consumed by the desire to learn and study as much as she could Consequently she listened carefully in class and appeared for her exams on the knowledge which she stored up from her listening For the 10th standard exam considering the hard work she put in her teachers allowed her to have a writer and Neha passed her SSC with a first division Her father withdrew Neha from school then as the doctor suggested that she should not strain her failing vision which may last longer if she preserved herself. Neha was sorely disappointed and unhappy at this particularly as she was sent away to work as a maid for her uncle and aunt. Neha pined all year to go back to her studies and games. When she, when Neha returned back home she worked at a job for a meager salary while she completed her diploma in telephone operating from a private agency Neha's mother heard about NAB India through a social worker and this was the turning point in Neha's life At NAB India I realized how fortunate I was she recounts I was not totally blind like most of my colleagues NAB India taught me everything and gave me the confidence to aspire. During her training at NAB India, Neha learned chess from the representatives of the Maharashtra Chess Association of the Blind and became fascinated by the game. She felt that playing chess would be a good way to compete with the sighted. Once she started playing, there was no looking back for Neha. Neha joined the Vivekanand classes in Dadar to complete her 12th standard privately. 
Her parents were unable to pay the fees, so Neha managed to have the fees waived in exchange for a promise to the head of the organization that she would not drop out. During this phase, Neha looked after a telephone booth allotted to her through NAB India and continued with her sports activities. Then, one month before her exams, she discovered that because she was a private student, she would not be allowed a writer for the exam. Thus started a runaround to all the doctors she knew because she needed a certificate saying that she was blind and in need of a writer and this was getting delayed. Desperate as her exams were approaching, with no writer on hand, Neha decided to change her medium of instruction because she knew it would be easier to find a Marathi student who had failed his 10th standard to write for her. So, in the very last month, Neha relearned everything, including economics, in Marathi. In the translation from English to Marathi, she was helped ungrudgingly by her teachers and friends. The audacious girl then privately found a 10th standard failed child who had a hall ticket to write for her 12th standard exam. Overburdened and stressed out, just as Neha thought she had reached the end of this travail, she was forsaken by the writer for one of the exams. I just sat there and cried loudly, she laughs. I raised hell and nearly brought the building down until half an hour later they got me a scribe. But Neha managed to complete her papers and passed with the first division, quite surprising her parents who were not even aware that she was taking the exam. By this time, Neha had realized that if she wanted to study or further her prospects in life, she would have to do it on her own. With help from NAB India once again, Neha got employment as a telephone operator with Motwani and company at a small salary. With this money, she enrolled herself into the Bombay University for a correspondence BA course. She wanted to be a lawyer and to do a master's in social work. While she was doing her third year exams, Neha got a job offer for telephone operator at the sales tax office. For her final BA exam too, Neha had to organize her own writers, which proved very difficult. But she managed and passed her BA with the second class before taking the job at the sales tax office. Already an all-round sports person, she now started gaining accolades in the world of chess as well. She won the All India Chess Blind Women's Championships and a gold medal competing against sighted ladies. Between 1991 and 2000, she successfully scaled the 13,500-foot peak of Zongri in Sikkim and was adjudged the best sports person amongst the visually handicapped. She also secured second place in the women's shot putt competition held by the National Society for Equal Opportunities for the Handicapped. In the year 2001, after having surpassed herself and proven beyond a doubt that no handicap was going to hold her back, Neha was awarded the distinguished Neelam Kanga Prize for Outstanding Achievement at Sports. I felt more motivated to perform better in my chosen fields and to participate on the national and international levels, she says. Neha feels happy that she has been able to achieve what she has all on her own merit. I have now proved to the world that we are not objects of pity or sympathy, she says. Neha was introduced to her husband, Nalin, a government employee, by a colleague. Nalin, who is cited, liked Neha's verve and her zest for life and convinced his parents that she was the ideal wife for him. After she received the Neelam Kanga Prize, Neha was four times the National Band Women's Chess Champion. With all this on her plate, it is a wonder that Neha finds time for her newly acquired hobby, which is ham radio. She has just completed a course and is waiting for her license.
Having arrived at the high point of a life full of achievement, Neha has one major disappointment. She cannot come to terms with the discrimination she faces due to her disability. If a sighted government servant achieves outstanding merit in national sports competitions, she is in entitled to one advanced increment. For international achievement, she is entitled to two increments. This rule does not apply to the blind, she says ruefully. Neha has sent many appeals on this matter to the authorities, but so far she has not had a positive response. For someone as courageous and versatile as Neha, who has journeyed long and patiently, surely this obstacle too shall be eliminated one day. The day that will sign signal the end of the battle, the disabled have to fight for equal opportunities. Hemant J. Patil, Honorary Secretary, National Association for the Blind, India.